In light of current interest rates and bond yields, could you comment on cash secured puts as an investment strategy? You know, it's very interesting to me. Uh, everybody wants to do something different due to low yields these days. And all of a sudden, just because yields are lower, people want to do sometimes some crazy stuff to try to increase their investment returns. Not always a good idea. Sometimes maybe you should just accept lower yields, that you have lower expected returns on your stocks, on your bonds, and on your real estate. But let's talk about this one in particular. First, let's talk about what a cash secured put is. A put is a type of option, right? There's basically two types of options. There's a call option and a put option, right? A put is the ability to sell for somebody else to buy something. And a call option is the ability to buy something if you want to. And so buying and selling calls, buying and selling puts, they're kind of opposites of each other. What you are doing with a cash secured put is you are selling it and trying to get a premium for it. And that's where your yield is coming from, is the premium that you're being paid by somebody else to have the ability to put their stock to you or their ETF shares, whatever it is, at a certain price. So let's say, for example, an ETF is trading at 100 bucks, okay? 100 bucks a share. And they are basically buying a put from you at a strike price of $97. So at any point in the next three or four weeks, maybe, they can force you to buy their shares at $97. And so typically with options, you do this 100 shares at a time. And so that might be worth a premium of $3 per share, right? Uh, or $300, okay? So the yield on that is going to be, because it's a cash secured put, you got to put money down, the money you would need to buy that stock, you know, $9,700 for 100 shares of that stock worth $97 a share uh, in order to earn that $300. So you divide out and that's how you get the yield from it. And if you earn that every month, that's obviously a lot more than you're going to earn in your money market fund. The problem with this sort of a strategy as a cash replacement or a bond replacement is it's dramatically more risky than buying a bond or investing in CDs or a savings account, right? And where does the risk show up? Well, this is a good time to talk about Larry Swedrow's quote, that if you ever see an investment with a higher yield than another one, and he's talking about fixed income investments with this, it's because it's more risky. Just because you can't see the risk doesn't mean it's not more risky. And, uh, and that's a good way to tell the risk of one fixed income investment to another. And so when you see this, the possibility of earning 2% or 3% a month, right? That's 24% or 36% a year. There's a lot of risk baked in there. So what's the risk? Well, let's say you're willing to buy the stock for some reason at 97 or the ETF shares, whatever they are, at $97 a share, but you're not willing to pay $100 a share for some reason for this investment for the long term, which obviously doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's say that's the situation you are. So you're perfectly happy to pay $97 a share for it. Well, uh, one of the risks is that the price never comes back to $97 a share. It just keeps going up and up and up and up and you never get a chance to buy it. And you should have bought it at $100 a share. Uh, but that's not the main risk we're talking about when you're selling these things. The main risk is that it really crumps. Let's say it goes to $90 a share, a 10% drop. Now, all of a sudden, they're coming to you going, you have to buy my shares at $97. Okay, so $97 minus $90, that's $7 a share. You got 100 shares, right? So that's $700. So you were hoping to earn $300 and instead you lost $700. Okay, this is kind of the way... Um, you know, uh, leverage works. Options are a lot like leverage in that respect. You can control a lot of money with very little money, uh, but small changes in price on the underlying asset can really dramatically affect the return on your investment. You've gone now from a yield of, uh, you know, 3% to a yield of minus, I don't know, 8% or whatever it works out to be. And so pretty dramatic uh, turn of events. Now, obviously the worst case scenario is this ETF or you know, more likely in the case of an individual stock, obviously, is that this thing goes to zero, right? Maybe you're selling uh, cash secured puts on GME or something, and it just really tanks because everyone gets sick of squeezing the short sellers or something. I don't know. Um, but what if this goes to $10 a share, right? So now you've gone from uh, $100 a share to $10 a share, and you're required to buy that fellow's shares at $97 a share. So now you're out a lot of money 
you know, you've had a, a very much a dramatically negative return. And so while cash secured puts are not among the riskiest of option strategy, they're kind of like covered calls that way, they're far more risky than investing in a savings account or bonds. And so this is not an alternative to bonds. It's not an alternative to to cash is not even an alternative to stocks. It's something completely different. And what is it? Well, it's essentially a gamble. Because remember what options are, right? Uh, options are a zero-sum game. What you lose, somebody else gains. What you gain, someone else loses. And that's before costs and taxes. Once you add in costs and taxes to the process, the overall return is negative. It's now a negative-sum game. And the problem with that is if you start doing it for the long term, you eventually end up losing. Plus, when you're trading options, you're usually trading with somebody who knows a whole lot more about the security than you do. And so you got to think about who's on the other side of that bet? Who's on the other side of that trade? And do I really want to be taking that? Honestly, in my portfolio, I try to only have assets with a positive expected return, and hopefully a positive real after inflation expected return. So I look at things like stocks that provide dividends and have earnings. I look at bonds that pay interest. I look at real estate that pays rent. Options don't pay that stuff. Okay. You're just making a bet. And what you're betting when you do a cash secured put is you're betting that the stock price will not fall more than to the below the strike price. That's essentially what you're betting. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty decent bet. You just don't know what's going to happen. And since my crystal ball is always cloudy, I recommend against betting on short-term stock market movements, which is what you're doing when you're buying and selling options, whether they're calls or puts, whether it's secured by cash or not. So not an approach I recommend. Um, obviously, some people are going to go play around with this stuff now that they can do it on Robin Hood, right? They've gamified investing and now you can trade options on Robin Hood with $100 or whatever the minimum investment is there. Um, but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. If you get into that game, try to limit how much money you're doing it with and recognize what you're doing. And, um, you know, don't don't put serious money into it. My dad, your host, Dr. Dahl, is a practicing emergency physician, blogger, author, and podcaster. He is not a licensed accountant, attorney, or financial advisor. So this podcast is for your entertainment and information only and should not be considered official, personalized financial advice.